Hello, I'm back. Did you miss me? Hi, and welcome to Drag Me with me, Legion Miller, your lost bisexual friend who doesn't know what she's talking about. I got a haircut. She's shaggy. I saw on TikTok today that the 80s are coming back into fashion, so I got these almost feathered bangs in anticipation. This I feel like this shag is like the queer girl summer haircut, so I feel like a fresh new lady. Thank God, I was so bored with my last hair. Anyway, I was gone last week, if you didn't notice, so I'm a little bit behind. Um, however, the world has felt like it was falling apart and I was feeling stressed and overwhelmed. And then I realized like, <clears throat> no one's gonna die if you just release this a week late. Okay, so that's what we're doing. I appreciate your patience with me. We're gonna do a double header today. So today we're talking about All-Star Season 7, Episode 7. Last week, I didn't get around to it. We're talking about it this week. And then at the same time, I'll also be releasing my reaction to Season 7, Episode 8, which I haven't watched yet because I want this to be as authentic as possible. Okay, so let's get started. Last episode, Jinx got blocked again by the Vivian. Jinx is salty about it for obvious reasons. I feel like she's kind of getting picked on. Plus Viv had already blocked her once and she blocked Viv. And it's just like, is this just going to keep going back and forth? Is that what we're doing? Is this what we're doing now? Um, but at the same time, I think Viv made a good choice, um, theoretically, because yeah, I think Jinx is the standout of the season. She is the threat. So it makes sense that the Viv would want to block her to keep her from getting any more stars. Kind of backfired on the Viv though, because then we find out that it's another design challenge this week and we know that Jinx um really bad at the design part. Yeah, can't sew. Just hot glues everything to her body, which frankly is still an impressive feat cuz um like I feel like usually hot glue doesn't really stick much to anything for very long and the fact that she's making garments that she can move in for at least, you know, however many minutes it takes to get up and down the runway a couple times is pretty impressive um but probably not legendary legends star worthy. So Viv probably should have blocked someone else. Unfortunately, hindsight 2020, she didn't know. So here we are. Jinx is blocked. She got the plunger again, feeling salty. The feud continues. All right, and, and, it, and it feels like tensions are starting to rise a bit. The stakes are getting higher. There's only a few more Legendary Legends stars left before we get to the finale where the top four with the most stars are going to compete. And right now it's been really neck and neck. Again, I always speculate how much of this show is, you know, scripted or predetermined or whatever. So I don't know if they did this on purpose so that we're all kind of like, who's going to do it? Because everyone's got at least one star and now we've got many queens with multiple stars. It's anyone's game at this point. And frankly, last week, I felt like Jinx kind of faded in the background a little bit. I feel like she's been getting thrown challenges like these design challenges, which again, this is the second one that she just doesn't shine on. And so I'm hoping for the coming weeks that they have more acting, comedy, something so she can shine because I am, I'm biased. I love Jinx. I want her to, I want her to succeed. This week, the challenge was legendary legend looks where RuPaul told them all to remake RuPaul's most legendary looks. <laughs> Talk about a major eye roll. But listen, she is a legend and she's got some great looks. So this was still a fun one to see. So the queens were given a choice of different RuPaul legendary looks throughout the years. The Vivian for having won last week got to choose first and then they like popcorned it down the line with Raja being the last one to be able to choose, which is rude. I feel like she's kind of always the odd man out. Odd woman out, odd one out. No one ever picks her other than last. I don't know if it's because she's older, if she's not as bonded to these younger queens or what the deal is, but I feel like she's getting the short end of the stick over and over and over again. But listen, she had a good attitude and she ran with it. So good for her. Then we get to watch the queens try to sew these garments together and kind of watch their process. Jinx, I feel like, was a little bit less in her own head about this one this time around. I think she felt a little bit more confident going into it, um, even though, you know, not that confident because she doesn't have any sewing skills, but confident enough that, you know, as she was going about it, it felt less doomsday-ish than the last time we had a 
fashion uh, design challenge. And I gotta say, Trinity the Tuck, it's so impressive how quickly she can get through sewing these things and they don't look thrown together. I don't know if she has a background, I mean, obviously she has a background in sewing, but I don't know if she like did a job as a seamstress or something. Um, someone last week told me that Raja is or was a um, makeup artist on America's Next Top Model, I think, which is really impressive. I didn't know that. Again, hi, I'm your lost bisexual friend who doesn't know what she's talking about. Raja, turns out, is an actual makeup artist, which makes sense. Very impressive. She also has the design chops. I really feel like she's bringing a lot to the table and she's getting, you know, the short end of the stick every time. Trinity the Tuck, though, her sewing is just like unendingly impressive. The, the rapidity with which she can sew. And then it's very nice that she's helping all these other queens, you know, warm and fuzzy, collegiality. That's very sweet. I feel like on a regular season of RuPaul's Drag Race, which I've only seen a couple, the queens would not necessarily be that generous with their time. So I think we are seeing kind of a different vibe. I mean, obviously with this type of season where they're all already literally stars, there's a lot more collegiality. They think they understand the industry and the importance of making friends and keeping friends and making connections and being that type of person who is giving and easy to work with and pleasant to work with. I think that's important in pretty much any industry, except for the legal industry. I feel like there's a ton of partners at big law firms who have tons of money and influence and power who are just notorious for being awful to work with but can then just get away with it because they make a lot of money. Anyway, that's the law though. We're talking drag. So it was really nice to see her kind of just giving giving her skills to the other queens and it's impressive to watch her work. I was also impressed with Jada and her tackling those giant sequins. Again, a lot of these fabrics are really difficult to work with and it's really impressive that these queens are just kind of jumping at these really difficult fabrics and running with it. All right, and then they're talking birthdays. RuPaul says her birthday is November 17th, which makes her a Scorpio, which literally explains everything. Spicy bitch, you know? Makes so much sense. Ugh, but poor Jinx. I mean, she is really, she's really struggling with this challenge. Even though she came in with a little bit more confidence, it's was rough to watch her work while all the other queens are kind of just sewing circles around her. <laughs> You'd think at some point she would have at least like taken some time to learn to sew. But listen, she's bringing a lot of other shit to the table. So like, you can't do everything all the time all at once. Have you guys seen that movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once? I, it was one of those movies where I had to like talk myself off a ledge and be like, Legion, you cannot ugly sob in this public theater. It was a really good movie. Anyway, moving on. They do this, they have all the sewing. And we go right to the runway. There's no other type of challenge. It's just this design challenge just still seems really hard, but it kind of makes for um, less content to react to. So this is probably going to be a shorter video, but um, we get to the runway. I will note how fun it was to see Michelle Visage um, just kind of letting her natural boobies out. I love natural bodies. I'm like, I just recently grew out all of my armpit hair and I've been like going braless more. And I'm just kind of like really into the natural female body lately. So it was nice to see Michelle Visage embrace her boobies. Also, I saw her daughter on TikTok. Her daughter is apparently on TikTok, but she posted this video being like, here's all the ridiculous pictures that my own mother has of herself in our own house. And I was like, that looks like Michelle Visage. And then I clicked on all the comments and it was like, oh, it's because your mom's Michelle Visage. If I were her, I would also have photos of myself all over the place. So anyway, so let's go down these runway looks, shall we? All right. First up, we have Evie Oddly in this pink orange interpretation of an older RuPaul look, which I really love. I love the original look, but I also love Evie Oddly's interpretation of it. She took the skirt and turned it into sleeves. And then she's got this kind of separate ensemble of a uh, tube top and long wide leg pants. The fabric is really beautiful and it really captures the same vibe as the like bustier part of the original RuPaul look. I think I wanted gloves from Evie Oddly. That's a small detail, but RuPaul in the original outfit is wearing these gloves and I just love a glove opportunity. At any, at any moment, I feel a glove opportunity should be taken and it wasn't taken here. But I love the kind of early 2000s almost modernization that Evie Oddly gave this. I love the wig. It's a really cool interpretation of 
the original look. Do I love it as much as the original look? Not really. I don't know if it's the shape of the original look. It's a little bit more traditional. It works better for me, whereas Evie Oddly's look is a little bit less formal or something. It's less chic, I guess, which is what I'm always looking for out of these queens, but maybe that's not fair. It's a beautiful ensemble that she made. It's really impressive. I think it's a really cool interpretation of the original look. And I love the two-tone lip. I feel like Evie Oddly does that one a lot and she does it really well. Looks great. And I do, and I do love the movement of the arm pieces that she has on as she's walking, they kind of flounce, which is very cool. Okay. And then we have the Vivian in this like gold monstrosity of a dress. I don't know. I usually am a big sucker for gold. I think there's too much bow happening for me. I don't love a bow. There's three bows on the original one in the hair, on the shoulder, on the hip. The fabric is kind of stiff. I don't know. It's fine. Is it like a standout legendary look to me? No, but again, this is coming from me, your last bisexual friend who doesn't have any context clues for what's happening. I think the Vivian's interpretation of it is interesting. I like the bustle. I like the shape honestly better than the original. I think it's at least interesting. I like that the bow, she kind of turned it into bunny ears, just making it a little bit more interesting. It looks very like almost 1700s French couture, you know, which I think we've seen a couple times in this season so far. So it's kind of fun to see that again here. Um, it's impressive that she was able to get this type of shape. Her makeup is great. I don't know that I would have paired purple with this gold, but you know, that's just me. It, it looks flawless. I don't know. It's fine for me. I'm not wowed. I like the off the shoulder moment with the kind of gold detailing, but I don't know, maybe it's the fabric that's just not working for me. I mean, I didn't really love the original look either. So that's not the Vivian's fault. Okay, next we have Shea Coulee. I'm obsessed with this look. I think it's amazing. I think she very much put her own spin on it. I think it's amazing that she hand painted that print. That's a really cool touch. And she took this kind of traditional looking, I mean, not the fabric, but the shape, a traditional kind of ball gown, which is gorgeous. I love this look a lot more than the last look that we just had, but she took that and she really changed it up in an interesting and very chic way. I feel like Shea Coulee is always bringing the chic to this runway. And it's really fun to see here what she did with this. I don't even understand really how the top part of this is working. If it's all one thing that she has then wrapped around her head, how it's attached. I don't know. Again, this fabric really hard to work with. She's got like a pleather looking shiny patent pleather thing happening. And it's hard to work with that kind of fabric. So I've heard. And the wig with the tiny sunglasses. I mean, this is a fierce look. I could see her like driving down the Pacific Coast Highway in a convertible looking amazing. And I think she really took this look and kind of elevated it. I wanted a little bit more with the bottom part. Like it kind of just feels like a pair of fitness leggings. Um, but I like that they do continue all the way down into the, like a sock past her shoe. Um, and I love the, the belt kind of taking the same fabric and print and putting it in the belt. I think that was a really cool way to kind of make the whole look really cohesive. I wanted more on the bottom part, but overall, I mean, this is a gorgeous outfit. Again, I see her like driving down the highway in a convertible, so the bottom part doesn't even matter. The top part looks amazing. All right, then we have Trinity the Tuck, who's kind of taking this blue baby doll dress that RuPaul had and turned it into this mermaid-shaped ensemble dress. It's gorgeous. Again, how the fuck did she do that so quickly? Like this is extravagant. That material is hard to work with. She's got this train kind of, but it's not a train, which is good because again, she was, she was getting a little repetitive with that one, but it is train esque, but it comes both forward and back. I don't know how she did it with so much fabric and so little time. And those gloves, you know, I said, I love a glove moment. This is a glove moment. I love the details. I hate that color blue. Aside from the color though, this is like a major winner for me. She looks amazing. I love the details. The details make all the difference. And I think a lot of the queens kind of ran out of time or just didn't have the talent <laughs> or something to add some of these details, but like the intricacy, how well it's made for how short a time they had. She's got a bow on the back. She's got bow on the front. She's got these frills in the gloves. Like she made a pair of gloves. This is 
impressive work. And she looks gorgeous. And it fits her perfectly. Like that ass. How does she do it? Okay, and then we have Raja. Raja, Raja, Raja. I, you know, I liked what she was attempting to do with this. At one point, she did say, like, it got to be a bit more busy than what I was intending. And I think that's exactly right. It's hard to see what's happening here. It's hard to see any sort of shape. And she was going for texture, but it's like so much texture that the texture is lost. You know, like it's all kind of this one amorphous blobby stringy thing for me. I really wanted to like it. And I think if she had left it more simple, it would have been better. Who is it like? Coco Chanel or someone always says like before leaving the house, take off one piece of jewelry or one accessory details. Less is more a lot of times. And this was too much. I love the wig. I love that she leans into the silver hair look. Obviously I'm biased, but she looks great with the silver hair. Um, it's just, there's so much happening. The makeup looks gorgeous. I love the boot, the thigh high boot. Unreal. I like what she tried to do with the structure. And one of the judges mentioned, like, you know, you just show just the right amount of skin to make it, like, provocative, but also, like, mysterious. I agree with that. I think it's cool what she was trying to do. I think it's too much. Even if she had lost, like, the headpiece, that might have been enough to kind of simplify it. I don't know. There's a lot of feathers. It's a lot, especially when you look at the original piece. I mean, the original outfit is actually kind of modern. Like that cutout look is very on trend right now. So she could have like taken that to the next level and been even like more risque with how much she was exposing or like, I don't know. I feel like there were other things she could have done with this. Again, she was chosen last. Like she got the bottom of the barrel last pick, which sucks. But like, I don't know. I feel like there was uh, something else she could have done with this or even gone with what she had made, but just again, less of it. It was too much. All right. And then we have Jinx Monsoon rocking purple again, like she did for the last design challenge. So the, the original outfit is this gorgeous kind of 80s looking sequined dress with one shoulder with this huge shoulder pad and then a slit up this one side of the leg. I am obsessed with this dress. This is gorgeous. And I think Jinx's interpretation of it is interesting and different. Do I love it as much as the original? Absolutely not. The original is kind of simple though. So I could see how like if it's a design challenge, a queen's going to feel pressure to like really amp it up, add a bunch of details, etc. And so there's a lot of details here. Again, I keep saying like it, it is like it matters, the details, but sometimes too much detail is too much. And the beauty of this dress, honestly, for me, the original dress was its simplicity. It's all one fabric, but the fabric itself, you can see there's lines in it. How it's been sewn together is really interesting. There's a slit, there's an interesting shoulder, but the fabric itself is all one type of fabric. And Jinx is like literally the opposite of that. It's like every different type of fabric you can think of. I like how she interpreted it where one of her legs has a purple tight and the other leg is like a sheer like flesh tone tight, but like there's a lot. I like the fringe. It's impressive again that she got all of this to stick together solely using glue. How is that possible? I don't know. The ruffles are just, too, it's too much, but I get what she was going for. And I like the interpretation. She did the best with what she could do. It's very, it looks like um, the sex worker you hire at your local saloon, which isn't a bad thing, but it's very different from the original. Okay, and then we have Jada Essence Hall. Unbelievable, gorgeous. She looks amazing. The cutouts are at the exact right place again. With this hip detailing, I've pointed this out in past looks during this season, something about this like drapey hip really accentuates their curves. The deep V-neck looks amazing. Again, the fabric is so impressive to have worked with that. The hair is perfect for the vibe. And in RuPaul's original one, it was kind of like this almost boring shape, very typical kind of unitard shape with like a skirt and then this giant beautiful feathery cape, which was amazing. And I really like how Jada took that and added more interest in the shape of the dress. Like this, her version of this dress is honestly way more interesting than RuPaul's original dress to me. And then she just takes this kind of smaller 
cape to kind of have the same effect as the big giant cape. Would I have wanted her dress as she has it also with a big giant cape? Yes. But I don't know how much fabric she had to work with or time. And the dress itself is absolutely gorgeous, fits her perfectly, really, I think, is a great interpretation of the original look. 10 out of 10, I think she knocked this out of the park. Okay, and then we have Monet Exchange. What is this called? The Face Keeny? Is that what they called it? I've definitely seen and heard of that maybe and reference in passing, but you know, haven't ever seen what it came from or the context. Um, I don't know, Monet. This doesn't do anything for me. The fabric's so busy. I think the thing that really works for me with the original look is that the fabric is busy, yes, but it's subtle enough and it's all one fabric that it works. And like half of what's really cool about the face Keeney is how closely it's fitting her lips and the glasses and the like neck piece and the gloves, like all of the elements that I love about RuPaul's look here that make it cool and kitschy and weird and campy is lost in the Monet Exchange one. Like there's no side pony. Instead, there's this weird top hat. The actual face mask doesn't fit her the way that it is supposed to with like the lips really being like, there was a point when um, Evie Oddly was assigned the color pink and she made this face covering that really like accentuated her lips and it like was very closely around it. And I think that is such a cool look because it makes them pop and it just, it makes it look like your whole face is covered with this thing and all that's popping out is the lips. There's something about it that really works that is the same on the face Keeney that like Monet just completely missed. There's just a giant hole around it. Like it doesn't have the same visual effect and then she doesn't have glasses on, which is also a part of this that makes it so absurd and stupid, as RuPaul would say. She loves stupid shit, and this is stupid. And I feel like Monet, it's not stupid. It just looks like a acid trippy Jackson Pollock painting from hell. It's too much. I can't, I hate it. I don't know, hate it. It's just, it's so not for me. I do like the, the earrings on the outside of the ears as I think RuPaul pointed out, that's stupid, that's funny. It's just nothing else is working for me. It's too much, it's too much. And yet also too little, you know? I, I don't know, this really fell flat for me. Okay, and then RuPaul announces the winners are Jada and Trinity the Tuck, 100% deserved. I think they both were the standout competitors this week. Trinity, I think, really put herself out there and helped so many other queens in a way that deserved recognition that she got. And her outfit is just absolutely impeccably made, beautiful, the details where they're supposed to be. It's just gorgeous. And Jada, similarly, it's so perfect. The shape is gorgeous. It's a really cool interpretation of their original outfit. Same with Trinity the Tug. It's a unique and interesting interpretation of the original outfit, but still true to the essence of the outfit in certain ways. Both of them deserved to have that win. And I, I really agreed with the judges this week. All right. So then Trinity the Tug and Jada do a lip sync for their legacy. And it was really fun to watch. At one point, Trinity was like in Jada's ass, which was fun. And Jada was a real consummate professional, just going with the flow. They played off each other. It was fun to watch. RuPaul got like really intense while she was watching it. I don't know if you caught that, but she was like, into it. It was fun to watch. Trinity ends up winning. I think it was really deserved, both based on her performance on the runway, her performance helping her fellow queens, and her performance in the final lip sync. I think she nailed it this week. I think it was a really deserved win. Okay, so Trinity wins, and then she ends up going on and blocking Evie, who you'll remember had no stars last week and then ended the week with two stars to be one of the top contenders. Jada, however, now is at the top. She has three stars. So she's really the one to beat right now and is doing really impressively. And it makes me think back to like the first or second episode when she was kind of getting teary and saying like she didn't feel like she deserved to be amongst those queens because, you know, she just won recently and kind of got her whole year taken away from her as the queen because of COVID and how she wanted to prove herself and keep up with them. And now look at her. She's doing great. So I think she's nailing it. Trinity definitely deserved this week's win. Her blocking of Evie. I don't know. Evie has definitely been on an upward trajectory recently. And I think that was also noted in this episode. So I don't think it's like an unfounded thing to have done. I don't think it was a wrong choice. I think it's really anyone's game at this point. And Jada, having just won, um, couldn't be blocked. And so I think Evie was 
a perfectly reasonable choice. It's kind of hard to know what's gonna happen next. All right, so now Jada has three stars. Jinx has two, Evie has two, Trinity the Tuck has two. It's really anyone's game at this point still. We've got what, four episodes left before the finale. So things are starting to get tight. I'm fascinated to see what happens next. You already know what happens next because I'm a week late. Go on over now and watch my episode eight reaction, which will be going live at the same time that my episode seven reaction goes live because again, I needed a week off last week, as did most of us, I'm sure. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget that you can listen to this in podcast form anywhere you get your podcasts. They're linked below. If you're on the go, you don't want to watch, there's an option for you. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Have a good day. Bye-bye.